Hi there! The world of analog electronics and digital electronics seems so different from each other, and yet they have a lot of commonalities and it is possible to mix analog and digital circuits in the same device. To ensure the compatibility between analog and digital, and the possibility to interface these circuits to each other, we need circuits that convert digital information into analog signals and vice versa. These circuits are called, respectively, Digital to Analog Converters, or DAC, and Analog to Digital Converters, or ADC. Today we will explore the first of these two circuits, and in particular the so-called R2R Ladder DAC. We will see how it works in theory, and we will verify its functionality in lab. Let's begin! Here is the schematic for the R2R ladder digital to analog converter with a 4 bits input. It is a very simple design and can be extended to any number of bits by adding more elements at the end. For example, here is a 5 bit DAC. You see that to increase the number of bits I just had to add an extra R2R pair of resistors. This type of device does not need any power supply to work just the voltage is provided by the 1 and 0 at its inputs. The output will be a fraction of the voltage associated with the logic 1. The fraction depends on the binary number added at the inputs of the converter, where the least significant digit is the one on the right side, D0. So, for example, with a 4-bit converter we have a resolution of 1 over 2 to the power of 4, which means 1 16th of the voltage assigned to the digit 1. If we use TTL devices, for example, the one has a voltage of 5 volts, and that means the resolution of the ladder is 1 16th of 5 volts, or 0 0.3125 volts. The resolution tells us what is the minimum increment of voltage when going from one binary number to the next. Increasing the number of bits reduces the minimum increment, which translates in increasing the resolution in the sense that the greater the resolution, the more intervals we can build between the values of zero and the maximum voltage. Here is a table to clarify the concept. On the left we have the number of bits characterizing the DAC, in this case 4. On the right we have the value of voltage for that particular combination of digits. The higher the resolution, the more the number of bits and the smaller the increase of voltage from one row to the next. With all zeros to the inputs, we obtain an output voltage of zero, because there is no voltage applied to the circuits besides the ground voltage. Let's see now what can we obtain with an input of 0001. Here is the circuit modified to represent the zeros and ones at the inputs. Assuming we deal with TTL logic circuits, the one is represented by a voltage of plus 5 volts, and the zero is represented by zero volts. And so, we apply plus 5 volts on this zero, and we connect all the other inputs to ground. To easily find the output voltage, we can apply the Thevenin theorem multiple times. First, we apply it to the first two resistors on the right, along with the plus 5 volts generator. This part of the circuit, once isolated, looks like this. The Thevenin equivalent voltage of this circuit can be easily calculated considering that the two resistors make a voltage divider by two, and therefore the output voltage is half the value of those plus 5 volts, which for now indicate as 5 over 2 volts. To calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance, we need to short the voltage power supply, and the circuit becomes like this. There are basically two resistors in parallel, each of a value of 2R. The equivalent resistor has half the resistance of the original resistors, and so it has a value of R. And now we can redraw the original circuit separating the Thevenin equivalent circuit and the load like this. This one on the left is the load, and the one on the right is the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Note now that the two resistors on the right are in series, and therefore the equivalent resistors has a value given by the sum of the two, or 2R. 
We can redraw the circuit one more time and we obtain this. And now we can reapply the Thevenin theorem to this part of the circuit on the right of the dashed line. Now that we know how to do it, we can quickly rewrite the right part of the circuit as a single resistance R and a voltage generator of 5 over 4 volts. The left side of the circuit is now the load that we can redraw unaltered. And now we can do another step, putting together the two resistors that we have on the right of this new circuit. And we can apply Thevenin one more time, obtaining yet another simplification of the circuit, where the new equivalent generator has a value of 5 over 8 volts. Another simplification step. And we find that we are left with a final voltage divider which provides a V out of 5 over 16 volts. And calculating the final value, we obtain an output voltage of 3.3125 volts. Now that we know the voltage corresponding to the combination 0001, let's also calculate the voltage values for all the other combinations that have in them a single digit 1. These combinations are 0010, 0100 and 1000. Let's start by evaluating the value of the voltage provided by the combination 0010. Here is the circuit corresponding to such combination. This time, we connect to ground the digits D3, D2 and D0, and we connect to plus 5 volts the digit D1. And now that you know how to deal with this kind of circuits, it should be really easy to proceed. The two resistors on the right are in parallel, and the equivalent resistor has a value of R. The two new resistors on the right are now in series, and the equivalent resistance is 2R, which we can draw before the branch with the generator, since they are in parallel. And now we can use the Thevenin theorem again on the circuit on the right of the dashed line. Because of that, we can draw a new circuit where the Thevenin voltage is 5 over 2, and the Thevenin resistance is R. And now we have two series resistors, which are equivalent to the single resistor 2R. Now we use Thevenin again on the part on the right of this new dashed line. And we obtain a new circuit with a Thevenin resistance of R and a Thevenin voltage of 5 over 4. And now we can replace the two resistors in series with their equivalent, which has a value of 2R. And finally, we can calculate the V-out through the voltage divider provided by the remaining two resistors, and we obtain a V-out of 5 over 8, which is 0 0.625 volts. Let's write down this information on the table. And now let's evaluate the V-out for the combination 0, 1, 0, 0. The resulting circuit will have a plus 5 volts on D2, while D0, D1 and D3 will be connected to ground. We resolve first the parallel resistors on the right, which provide a single resistor of value R. Then we resolve the two series resistors on the right, obtaining the equivalent resistor 2R, which is also in parallel with another 2R, and so the whole block is a single resistor R. Now we resolve the new series, which provides us a new resistor 2R. And finally, we apply Thevenin one last time on the part on the right, obtaining a new circuit which has a total of three resistors and one voltage generator of value 5 over 2 volts. The two resistors in series can now be combined together in a single resistor of value 2R and the V-out can be determined as the result of the effect of the new voltage divider. And therefore, the V-out is equal to 5 over 4, which is 1.25 volts. We can now write this information on the table, and we can start working on the last of the combinations we selected, 1, 0, 0, 0, which we now know it is going to have a V-out of 5 over 2, or 2.5 volts. 
To fill up all the other entries of the table, we can just notice that we are in the presence of a linear circuit, and because of that, we can apply the superposition principle to calculate all the other values of the table from the ones we already have by adding them up appropriately. And so, for 0, 0, 1, 1, we can add 5 sixteenths and 5 eighths, obtaining a value of 0 0.950. 0101 0, 1 is obtained by adding 5 fourths and 5 sixteenths, which gives us 1.5625. And following the same procedure, we can fill up the entire table. Note that the last value in the table is not 5 volts, and that is because the first entry of the table is made of all zeros, and therefore we have a total of 15 non-zero entries. The 16th would have been the 5 volts value, but the binary number 1111 is in fact 15, not 16. Summarizing, known the number of bits n of the DAC, we can calculate the resolution as the minimum increment of voltage from one row to the next as 1 over 2 to the power of n. The B out instead can be calculated like this where the 0, the 1, and so forth are either the 0 or the voltage associated with the logical 1. So, for example, for n equals 4, the formula becomes this one. And for n equals 6, the formula becomes this other one. Well, all that is interesting, but let's make a lab experiment to verify, as usual, the theory that we just described. Okay, this is uh, a 4-bit duck. These uh, four wires are the 4 bits, the 0, the 1, the 2 and the 3. Right now are connected to ground. And here are the resistors, the R resistors and the 2R resistors. The circuit is already powered up with a voltage of 5 volts. Let's uh, take a look now. So, first of all, let's check if we really have 5 volts available. So, I'm going to do this way. I'm going to use this over here. And I'm going to check the voltage like this. And we have 0. Point 0, 3 volts. So let's see if I can rearrange it a little better. Okay, that sounds good. We have 5 volts now. So I'm going to take this away from here. Let's start the configuration 0, 0, 0, 0, which is this one. And of course we have a 0 in the output. Then 0, 0, 0, 1, so this goes to 1, and we have 0 0.31, if we round it. So then 0, 0, 1, 0, so this goes like this, and this is 0 0.62, these are millivolts, so that's the right reading. And then we go to 0, 0, 1, 1. so this goes up again. And this is 0 0.92. And then we have this go down both. And this go, down, go up, so 0, 1, 0, 0. And this is 1.24. And now 0, 1, 0, 1 this 1.54 then 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and this is 1.86 and then 0, 1, 1, 1 and this is 2.16 And then uh, one zero zero zero. This goes up. 
like this. There we go. And this is 2.49. Then we have a 1001, which makes 2.78. And then 1010, 1010. And this is 3.1. And then 1011, so this goes up, 3.40. 1100, which is 3.73. And then 1101. One one zero one, which is four point two two. Then one 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 zero one 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 zero four four point thirty five, and finally all ones, which is four point sixty five. And as you may recognize, these are the same numbers, well, very similar numbers that we have seen with the, calcula with the calculations in, in the theory. So everything works fine. It looks like uh, this respects exactly what uh, we have seen on paper. And this is all I have for the R2R -R ladder digital to analog converters. Of course, there are several other circuits that implement such a converter, but this is a very simple one to design and to build, and can be used in several applications. The precision of such converter depends entirely on the resistors used. The smaller the tolerance, the more precise will be the conversion. For common applications, the use of resistors with a 1% tolerance will provide very good results. For high-precision measurement instruments, however, the signs use integrated R2R networks, which provide a more precise determination of the resistor values. Very high-cost devices may also use different kinds of converters, where additional precision is provided by more complex circuits. In future videos, I will show you a few applications of the R2R ladder, used alongside other devices, both digital and analog. I also plan to use this technology to improve one specific project I have already completed a number of months ago. Can you guess which one it is? Give it a try in the comments. The first one to provide the right answer will receive a digital volt ammeter like this one in this picture. I'll see you in the next video, and in the meantime, happy experiments!